Hey, so this is the story of the day I found out that my mom was a mafioso. <laughs> I'm so serious. Like, she missed her calling. She should have been breaking legs for the mafia, for real, okay? So, my mother um, one day called me. I lived, I, I had my own place and my mom called me one day on the phone and she's like, hey babe. And I'm like, hi, hi mom. Um, I, I, I have to go to court on Monday or whatever day it was. And um, I just, I, I, I just wanna let you know that um, if things don't go well, I'm putting my house in your name and um, and some other things in your name. And uh, I, I just want you to know that, um, yeah. So I'm like, Ma, what are you talking about? Because like my mother didn't have a criminal history, you know, she, she was cray cray <laughs> but i thought it was like that kind of in the house cray cray you know what i mean like you quietly abusing your kids nobody really knows about it but you know you know how to act out in public um but she's talking like if something really serious going down so she was like uh and I, and and i want to know um will you go to court with me and so I'm like, yes, of course, of course, I'll go to court with you. I was like, but my, my, uh, what is going on? What's going? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But you know, the court date is such and such a day, so be here, whatever, whatever, and then we'll go to the court together. And it was like right before the court date, like you know, the next day or a couple of days. Like it was last moment type of crap. So. I am, I'm worried. I'm worried. She's calling me talking about, she's gotta go to court. If things don't go well, she's putting stuff in my name. What in the world is she talking about? I don't know. So we go to court. She won't talk about it the whole way to court i you know i get over to her house we ride to court together all that kind of, she won't talk about it at all i'm just gagged I, what in the world what in the world is going on so we get into the courtroom the judge finally comes in you know how they have you sitting there for like an hour before the judge even comes into the room so the judge finally comes into the room and then he's starts he begins calling cases so case after case after case until the entire courtroom is empty except me my mom her attorney and the essential other staff that needs to be in there i'm worried i am so worried so after the courtroom is all clear, the judge finally calls my mother's name, my mother's case. <clears throat> so we go up there to stand before the judge, you know, on, on our side, the defendant side of the courtroom. And the judge reads off the charges. My mother shot a man with a crossbow three times in his chest. She put three arrows in his chest and then began to beat all about his head with the handle of a long axe.
Oh my God, what in the world is going on? The judge is reading these charges off and I'm like, Who is this lady? <laughs> Who is she? Oh my God. I mean, when I was a kid, not even when I was a kid, my mother beat me up one time when I was 30 years old. She was mad because she couldn't have my food stamps. That's another story. <laughs> oh, hit this, the subscribe button. I have so many crazy stories from my life. So anyway, the judge reads off the charges, what my mom did. And he looks at the charges. And he looks at my mother. This man had no words. <laughs> he was like, I don't know what happened. I don't want to know what happened. He was like, um, ma'am, you have no prior record. So, uh... He, you know, he's rubbing his head in. <laughs> he don't know what to do. <laughs> it's like, shit. <laughs> I mean, she up. <laughs> he was messed up. He was like, um, uh, you, you, you have no prior criminal history. Uh, he's like, look, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a step on this, and as long as you don't do anything over the next year, this thing would just go away, okay? But if you get into any kind of trouble over the next year, then this is gonna come up and you're gonna have to answer for this, you know, and whatever it, whatever else it is that you do. So my mom was like, whoo, that <laughs> So we hurry up and get out that corporate. We hurry up and get out that courtroom, right? She's like, freedom! She just knew she was going to jail. So we get in the car and I'm like, Mom, what happened? Why did you shoot Mr. Daryl with a crossbow three times and then beat him all in his head with the handle of a long axe? I was like, what happened? And my mother, my mom had the disposition of a rattlesnake, okay? She was not a nice woman. I definitely, even as her child, treaded very lightly around my mother. Anybody could catch it, okay? Anybody could catch it at any time. I am not sure that my mother was completely sane. I really think she might just not have been diagnosed and might have had some mental issues. I have no idea. But she was not a nice person. <laughs> she was not a happy person. So I was like, Ma, what happened? And she was like, he came into the kitchen. She was always talking between from from between clenched teeth, you know. She's he came in the kitchen and wanna argue with me. And wanna Throw my refrigerator down on the floor. Mm -hmm. I told his ass. I took my crossbow and I shot him. You ain't going to do me like that. You're not going to treat my stuff like that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he, he started messing with the wrong one. All right, all right, all right. We, we don't have to relive it. Uh, don't, let's not go back to that day. <laughs> it's just, I ain't trying to catch no blues. She might have a flashback. Oh, Lord. Goodness, grape juice. So, yeah. That is when I found out that my mother should have been breaking legs for the mafia. She probably would have actually been happy had hurting people been her job. Because she sure did it like she got paid for it. Anyway. God rest her soul. <sighs> yeah, my mom, she passed away in 2020 during um, COVID. So, um, yeah, <sighs> it was rough. It was rough growing up with her as my mother. But anyway, um, I do have a lot of crazy stories um, about, about my life. 
So that's what my little YouTube channel is about. I hope you guys subscribe. Um, also, I have an audio book. Uh, it's called Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. I used to be, I used to be gay. God actually spoke to me and delivered me from homosexuality. I was not going to church. I was like, I left God alone and I hope that he would leave me alone. Um, but he had other plans. And so he just confronted me uh, and he asked me a question. And when I asked that, answered that question, he just took all those desires, all the lusts, all the feelings that I had for women, just gone. I never had to pray about it, never had to fight it, never had to um, worry about it. And, and I wasn't worried about it. I was happy like that. But anyway, out of me being gay for uh so many years one of the one of the major things that i wanted to do was make sure that my woman was always pleased so i had a 10 orgasm quota i would make sure that all my girlfriends had at least 10 orgasms in under an hour through the missionary style yeah i was one of those <laughs> That ain't none of your business. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but um, <clears throat> so in the bedroom secrets of an ex lesbian, the audio book, um, I give those techniques that I used to use step by step instructions for guys. There's a lot of guys out there that are um maybe you know lack confidence in the bedroom. Um, might just want to you know deliver some new techniques to he, the old girl you know what i mean y'all might have been together for a little while and y'all ain't chasing each other around like teenagers no more you know bring a little better spice she'll like it she'll like it i promise and um ladies you too if you've never had an orgasm get the book because you know it's things that I learned from doing them to myself and to, you know, other women. I have a woman's body. So, you know, you'll, if you listen to the book, then you will know what to do to make sure that every time you make love, you are having those fireworks pop off. <laughs> you know, it's not fair when only the guys pop off in the bedroom. You know, everybody want to pop off too. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You can't be leaving the ladies hanging. That ain't right. That ain't right. Y'all be stingy. So anyway, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. The link to the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesson. This wig is getting on my nerves. Okay. I can't wait to finish this video so I can snatch off this wig and get this crap off my face. But anyway, uh, the link to the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian is in the description to below. It's the Koji. Um, and yeah, so there's going to be some other videos linked to this video when I finish. Y'all have a beautiful day. Bye.